Hello, my name is Zach Ciotta. I am the host of HVAC Shop Talk, and I wanted to come on here and expand upon some things we were talking about yesterday as far as apprentices. Now, we talked about apprenticeships and how they're beneficial and how you can be a better apprentice, but I want to talk about having experience in both the install and service side and how that's beneficial. And there's a few quick points I'm going to make, and we're going to make several videos like this, but I want to keep them short and sweet so you guys can hit them real quick and go back to work or do it at lunchtime or do it whenever. Just want to make them small. We're going to break them apart, and I hope you guys enjoy them, and make sure you're interacting in the comments, and please leave a like on the video if you have time and are so inclined. But I want to talk about three things in particular that can make a service tech better because he did install first. I'm going to start with knowledge of airflow and not just airflow by the numbers like X amount of CFM, but just what makes good airflow, what size ductwork makes good airflow because you had to fabricate it or you had to install it. So even if you didn't know directly, you were working under somebody that knew and designed something and you could see what sizes went with what tonnages. Even if you didn't know the calculations, you still knew what to expect for each tonnage machine or what size furnace. Air filters, you knew how to size them. Maybe you didn't know the formula to size them, but you knew if you had a two ton system, you would usually see a 20 by 20 filter grill, 400 square inches. Or if you had a four ton system, you'd see a couple of them, but you came accustomed to see X grill with X machine. And you became familiar with the design and hopefully a good design from your boss. So you understood expectations of what you should see in every job. Therefore, when you cross over onto the service side, you can take that knowledge over there to help diagnose issues. And a good example of this would be, let's say you have an air filter for a four ton system and it's a 14 by 24 filter grill with air filter in it. That's way too small. It's like for a ton and a half. And you go outside and your super heat is running really low. Then you can sort of say, well, I don't know if it's the airflow, but I saw there's a 14 by 24 inside. So I'm going to test either static pressure or temperature drop or something like that. See if I can confirm that we have an airflow issue. And that's one way that you can use that installer knowledge to make you a better service tech. Another thing that installers do quite a bit that service techs don't necessarily get to do is read an instruction manual. Now, a lot of guys know, and we've all debated different aspects of jobs before, what's right, what's wrong. But at the core of this, manufacturers give you this documentation that will tell you exactly how their machine is supposed to be set up and how it's supposed to work. So if you're reading those day in and day out, you're going to have that extra knowledge base inside of your head on a variety of subjects that you can apply to installing and to service. So perhaps you had to read how dip switches are set up on a variable speed furnace. And you come back as a service tech and you see all these dip switches, but there's no book any longer. So you can try to find it online. And sometimes you can find it online. Or you can go back to that installer's knowledge where you set up some dip switches. So you might be able to spot something out of place. Like if there's a trim switch that's not set up right or set up for the wrong tonnage or just a familiarity with the board itself or the blinker codes on the board. Just having that book, having that knowledge previously is going to help you out in the future as a service tech. And every one of those books you read is going to improve you in some way. And it kind of leads into one of the big points that I see a whole lot, which is typically found in those books. But if you're installing, especially condensers or gas appliances, you have a certain amount of clearances you need. I don't know how many times I've seen for the last several years on a channel called Dizzy Dallas, which is a guy named Dallas Grissom. He sets ream units. And for a long time, until they switched over to their new cabinet styles, he'd set those boxy looking ream units with the service access on one side. And he would be sitting them and it would look so close to the house that every single video, someone would say something about how close it was. And Dallas, he had read the manual. He knew how far they could be away from the house. He would show people it would happen day in and day out. But he had to set them that close because where he's working, there's not a whole lot of space. And it looks like there's, you know, there's dividing lines between properties. And he has to stay a certain amount of space away from that dividing line. And it's usually called, it's called setback. And seeing that he's read the manual, he knows what he's doing. He knows that he can set a machine that close. Whereas if you hadn't read the manual or you're coming back years later, you might look at it and say, hey, that's way too close. We're going to have an airflow problem. When it's not the case, because he's read the manual that when he knows when he comes back to service something or 
if someone else comes to service something, he'll have a leg up on that person because he'll know what the clearances are. And every piece of machine you have, every different brand that you set over your career is going to give you that extra bit of knowledge that you can carry with you. Because brands change. They, they release new models, but a lot of the stuff stays pretty similar as far as clearances. And there's some general clearances that you have to be aware of. Like, you know, if you have single wall pipe on a vent or you have B vent, you know that you're going to go from like six inches, I think it is, six inch clearance to combustibles for the single wall and one inch clearance for B vent, I want to say. Help me out if I'm wrong there in the comments, guys. But you'll have that extra bit of knowledge. And a lot of that comes from reading manuals, knowing clearances. And it's not very sexy, but it's definitely very useful, especially if you become a service tech. So a few years of installing will do a lot for your service career because you'll have that extra bit of knowledge that'll get you a leg up in diagnosis and spotting these problems right off the bat. Guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Look for more coming up really soon, and I'll see you on the next one.